and it doesn't, you know, jiggle after that. And my money don't jiggle jiggle, it folds. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be doing a full face of Westman Atelier, one of my favorite clean beauty brands. And I have three new items from Westman Atelier. One very new being the setting powder, one kind of new being the brow pencil, and three being something that's new to me, which is finally getting the powder bronzer. And I don't have everything that I once had from Westman Atelier. This is my ongoing disclaimer with full face videos, but I can speak to the things that I have decluttered because I didn't like them. You know, I decluttered them because I didn't end up using them, but I have owned almost everything that they make besides the brushes and the lip suede. So we're going to fill in the blanks with other things, try and come up with something really like fresh and pretty and lightweight and all the things that Westman Atelier aims to do in solving your makeup routine. And we'll chit chat along the way. So let's go ahead and jump in. Oh my gosh, lately my child has been requesting Elmo in the morning and what he means is that he figured out that Elmo has an Instagram. <laughs> and so he will watch like one Instagram reel over and over and over again. It's like I have anyone, anyone, anyone can be, anyone, anyone, anyone can be friends. Yep, and that's the whole song, now you know it, now you're caught up. That is what I have stuck in my head currently. Okay, so Westman Atelier, founded by Gucci Westman, a makeup artist who also happens to just be, I don't know, she seems really cool. <laughs> I like following her on Instagram. This is all I have left of my Vital Skin Foundation Stick. I have this in Atelier Zero. As they have been at Sephora a little bit longer, they have expanded their shade range, which is refreshing. Always more could be done, but I do start to see kind of what I'm learning is like the Sephora effect. Sephora advising brands, I'm assuming, to expand their shade ranges to appeal to more people, you know, in their customer base. I think that's probably a, a big tenet of including brands now. Going to start with this, and that means that like, there's not going to be a full face foundation product. Westman Atelier really leans into the idea of only kind of like putting makeup where you need it and all the textures seem to be really built around that. So it behaves in a way that like really looks like skin. When I went on my honeymoon, this was the only complexion product that I brought. I brought this, actually that's not true. I also was really, really into the Drunk Elephant Tinted SPF at the time. And that was my base that I was using. And then I would put this on top of it. And then I was just bringing like one blush stick, a mascara, and I don't know, I think probably like boy brow or something. And this does kind of go differently in my routine as a result of the fact that like it's not a regular foundation and it's also not really a regular concealer. And so the way that I tend to do this is like, I'll put some of it on to kind of like get my bearings and you know, take away some of the things that are a little bit distracting on my face, mainly just like dark circles and like discoloration and stuff. And then after I do everything else, I'll probably go back in with it because everything stays really like flexible and movable. Less so now that there are as many powder products, but it used to be literally just these sticks you know, and then they also had like the super loaded highlighters. So I had super loaded in the Peau de Pesh shade for years and years, and it kind of became this like trope, right? Where I would always threaten to declutter it, threaten to declutter it, because I was like, I never reached for this, but it was $75. And I just ended up decluttering it eventually, not because I didn't like the formula, but because I couldn't figure out how to use it. Peau de Pesh is a peach color. And I was like, this isn't a highlighter, it's a blush. But I didn't behave enough like a blush that I was like excited to use it as a blush, especially because the Baby Cheeks sticks of their actual cream blush are so great. All their cream formula, well, not all of them, their complexion formula, their contour formula, and their cheek, you know, their blush formula are so hit it out of the park amazing. I mean, it looks effortless, right? And it was effortless to apply. The, I, I wanna call it the Lit Up Highlighter Stick is very slick. And not slick in the way that like the Merit ones are, like I like those. This is more like, I, it just never seems to really wanna communicate with your skin. It just stays slippy. I got a lot of recommendations over the years of people saying, well, you need to use it as a primer, or you need to use it under, or over, or with this, or without this, or whatever, and I never 
found a way to make it really work in my routine in a way that like I felt confident being like, yes, I can advise the best way to use this. And I eventually just decluttered it because I was just not excited about it. So I guess the thesis is I always get really excited about Westman Atelier products coming out, but they really commit to a concept. And that means that they are either incredible to me or totally disappointing. It's n hardly ever an in-between, especially like with the mascara and the iPods. And that's kind of the hallmark of innovation to me. So it doesn't make me mad, you know? It's just valuable information. And sometimes things just don't work for me personally in my routine, but the iPods I found to be, and that was the only thing I've ever gotten from them in PR, I think. They blended away, they wouldn't build, they made me crazy, but my sister loves them, so I gave them to her, you know? And the mascara, as much as some people really, really love it, it's $62, and it immediately just deposited above my eyes, deposited below my eyes, just made me look like a fool, so. That is why I don't have those anymore, but those are my takes on them. And I have videos of every single one of these things in action. So maybe I will find, if I remember, I'll find a way to link those. Another absolutely exquisite product that's been in my collection for a very long time. And I really have made like almost no dent in it. The way that these things are so expensive, it's a tough initial investment. And I'm not telling anybody that they have to go and you know buy from Westman Atelier and like, oh, you just need to like stomach the like cost per use or whatever. Like makeup is not essential to anyone, but this is a phenomenal contour stick that is like a really agreeable shade for me because it's like kind of a bronzer. When I initially used it, I actually was able to use it kind of as a bronzer. And now I have the, you know, the actual powder bronzer. So we will just use this as a contour, but it's definitely not as like super, super gray, cool toned as some other contours that I like. But I think that that kind of lends it to looking a little bit more natural and not feeling like I have to like build a ton of scaffolding as it were for the rest of my face. You know, it's not like I have to pile on a bunch of other different colors to make it look real. Kind of pack that into my hairline a little bit. I find that I have to use dry shampoo even on the first day that I wash my hair because my skincare like makes my hair greasy on the front. So if you ever see like a white cast, it's because it's literally part of my everyday styling routine. And the dry shampoo that I use is that the PhD, the like extra strength one or whatever from Living proof. I don't know why, I think I want to see visible changes, which is like that, you know, salon that's in malls. <laughs> it's just like not a memorable name, but yeah, living proof. And it apparently actually cleans your hair. And I like it a lot. I actually really like the smell, especially when I get in the shower and the water hits my hair. I'm like, ooh, I would like a perfume that smells like that. That's how much I like it. So it's kind of freckle colored, you know? So it's not, it's not super, super grayish. It's a nice natural looking, it can go like right on bare skin, which is not always the case with contours for me. So V nice. So this is Biscuit. And again, they've expanded this shade range since it's been in Sephora. It used to be just one shade of contour and it was kind of hard to talk about. <laughs> Even in 2019 on my channel, you know, talking about clean beauty, just understanding how underserved the community was on clean beauty. And like, it just became this growing like a monkey on my back. I'm like, okay, can we, can we evolve here? <laughs> and it's nice to be able to kind of return to brands, not because it's my forgiveness to like give to these brands or like my apologies, my implied apologies to accept just because like, you know, if I were coming to it at face value, I'd be like, there's more than one shade of contour. You know? <laughs> like it's not completely like dismissed out of hand. Okay. Let's discuss quickly the Baby Cheeks Blush Sticks. I have three of these. One of them is in Bichette, which is just not my shade. It's kind of a little bit too pinky red for me, but 
I have here Petal and Mimi. Mimi is a site exclusive for Westman Atelier. So, you know, every time people are trying to get Westman Atelier on sale through one of their retailers, like Mimi is the one that everybody's like, mm, I can't get it. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. It's such a good nude blush on me. And then Petal, again, was the only one that I brought on my honeymoon because it is I mean, it's just like a one and done blush for me. All of her colors of her blush are so dialed in that they, I don't ever, I mean, I'm going to today just for the sake of like demonstration, but I don't ever feel like I absolutely have to layer them and build them in order to achieve a color that looks good on me. I really feel like when you put one on, it's a look in and of itself. And there's something really, really fantastic about that. So it means that you don't, I mean, when you see her working on people's faces, you see obviously like an entire spread of all the different shades and everything. And she's sitting there just kind of dib dabbing and stuff. But that's kind of the cool thing about these is they all have such like a distinct identity that like if you pick one and that's your shade that looks good on you, like you don't, ha you don't really feel compelled to just like reach for something else all the time. It does actually simplify your routine, or at least it does for me. So I am going to start actually with Mimi because it's a little more nude. So I'm going to go with that kind of, you know, a little bit more watercolor and then we'll go for petal as like the focal point. So my last video, you guys, I really, really appreciated the feedback in the comments. It was like one of the most informative comment sections I've had in a while. So if you missed it, the video was, and by the way, I'm not putting the powder bronzer on yet because I am going like all cream and then I'll do my powders. So yeah, that video, if you missed it, was an anti-haul of everything that was on trend mood right now. And it was mainly because when I opened trend mood, I instantly felt cynical that day. I really happened to hit a moment where I really genuinely, with the exception of like maybe one or two things I was curious about, I was just like, it just happened to be a bunch of things that I didn't want. Sometimes people just appreciate having those kinds of palette cleansers. But it was kind of also exacerbated by the fact that this room is getting really overwhelming. I mean, it's not just makeup either. It's like brushes, it's tools. It's the fact that I use it as an art studio as well. Like it is just kind of my space in this house where I have put a sign on the door that says, do not clean because we have a service that comes every couple of weeks and like, you know, helps us out, does like a nice hard restart on our cleaning and that's really appreciated. But coming in here, there's nothing that they would be able to do. It's just chaos. My solution is like, oh my, you know, I'm kind of all or nothing, big Aries energy. And my instinct is just like, oh my God, flush it down the toilet. <laughs> which of course is not even possible, but there is just kind of this, you know, solution oriented mindset where like, I don't want to get into the weeds with anything. And that's just my personality. But the comments helped me kind of take a breath and be like, okay, first of all, the service that I'm providing of having an encyclopedic collection is actually appreciated. Sometimes I don't realize that, or sometimes I don't, I guess, see it enough. And what it can feel like is just gluttony, you know, where I'm like doing my own makeup on my own time and I'm looking around at my collection and I'm just like, who needs this much makeup? This is stupid. You know what I mean? And so I'm like, you know, what purpose is this serving? Whereas if I were to ask literally anyone who watches my channel, they'd be like, it's actually served a great purpose and you've kept me from buying things, you've saved me money. And I'm like, okay, to hear that feedback is so valuable because it just reinforces why I decided to do it this way in the first place. Because like when someone says, you know, uh, I don't need this, and they've never touched it. I'm just like, but how do you know? And fighting that feeling was what I was aiming to do in that video was just kind of try and get out of my own head. And it, it was, it was a struggle. You guys saw me kind of struggling. I was like, ah, I'm like hell bent on talking myself out of these things. But like, I, I could not parse the difference between me as a makeup user and me as a makeup reviewer, because I feel like as a makeup reviewer, it is my responsibility to seek out my curiosity, like, you know, see it through and figure out the answer. Like I, I always say, like, I need to know. I just, I just need to know. And one of the other things that of course it's, you know, one of those things that like is biting me in the back all the time, just being like, you know, I, I just want to ignore it is the whole idea of, of organization. Because I say like, I, I can't, use something if I can't see it kind of thing. And that's probably just a discipline thing. Oh, everybody loves to diagnose me with ADHD in the comments. I don't think I have ADHD. I don't know. There's probably different kinds, but like I have no problem concentrating. It's just, I also, I'm a chaotic person. Like it's not that I have lost control. It's that I kind of like thrive in chaos a little bit. So all that to say, 
you know, I was watching some of Hindash's stories and I'm watching him like pull out a shop. It's like a POV, an actual POV, right? Where it's like, you know, like you're playing a first person shooter video game, except he's carrying like a shopping basket and he's walking through this room of his own collection of makeup, which he is an actual makeup artist for many people. So it serves him better to have like every shade of something, but it was, he's a Taurus. It was so organized and the drawers that everything was in were lucite and you could see everything and they were all kind of like flattened out in a display kind of like at a Mac counter except it was clear and there was something so stimulating about that to me not just in the sense of like wow wouldn't that be nice but also like even if I can't get like an entire mall display installed in this room there has to be some kind of organization solution for my makeup as I kind of graduate past the like purge urge, right? I have this urge to purge because it doesn't fit anymore. I'm like, okay, maybe I need to graduate past that and just understand that like it's an encyclopedia that has outgrown its space, but that doesn't mean that like it's bad. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that it's actually too much. It actually just means that I need to re-strategize and there has to be some kind of solution where I can see what's going on. And that also means that they can't be just sitting in a pile in bins because it's like this constant search and it still has to live in my mind palace. That's the problem. If I can see it, I can like offload that data onto a display where I can actually refer to it. But right now, regardless of where it lives, it has to be in my mind palace. And like, that's too hard for me. So yeah, in the spirit of my channel always being an ongoing conversation, I appreciate you guys kind of sparking a lot of conversation in my comments this last time and I invite you this time to maybe offer some solutions because there are people out there I know I know you guys exist because I'm the weirdo who like can't watch organization shows I'm just like this is so genius but there are people who just get stoked on organization you know the, the Khloe Kardashians of the world uh, let me know if there's some kind of like really exciting solution of like drawers where I can put it in my room without, you know, paying $10,000 for it or something and actually be able to see my makeup without it being everywhere. <laughs> you know, I would really appreciate that. So yeah, I think that part of me is like, oh wait, maybe, maybe I need to take this seriously as the fact that like this is really my job, you know, and it's my career and it's not just some kind of like thing that I'm wondering if it's gonna work out like I need to just take the next step you know and like let the things be the things let all the stuff be something that's like part of my life and own it instead of feeling like it's something that's owning me <laughs> okay so I am feeling a little contrasty at the moment and I think it's just my senses don't know how sometimes to cope with not wearing foundation, with foundation not being the first thing that I like cover my face in because then I'm kind of just working with like all of my, my pigmentation showing through and stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of breathe through that for a second. And I'm actually gonna start with the regular powder, not the bronzer. And they actually are in different colored compacts we love to see it. I appreciate that. So yeah, this is the Vital Pressed Skincare Powder and I got it in translucent. I, man, I co-wiggled. I sat there and just, what's the word? I, I agonized over whether to get this or the Bubble Pink because the Bubble Pink has great reviews and it's supposed to be brightening, but I was like, what if it shows up pink? on my skin and I've just blown $75 and I don't like it or something. So I went with this and I will say, you know, for all these people who are in my comments being like, it's super blurring and it's invisible and it really is like nothing else I've ever used. I've used it twice now and like, it's kind of white. It might be a little too illuminating for me and I still kind of prefer the Kosas for like illumination without it leaving like color behind. And maybe it does leave color behind. Maybe the Kosas does, it just comes in more shades. And maybe I should have gotten bubble pink, but like it's very pretty. It's just a little bit like white for me. It's a little bit visible, you know?
And I did find that when it creased under my eyes, because this is inherently skincare based makeup, you can't expect it to be this like long wearing Estee Lauder double wear kind of thing where, you know, you hit it with setting spray and it's a literal mask and it's never going to like wear in or wear off. As this wears in underneath my eyes, my 35 year old under eyes, the creasing that I see, the micro creasing is white. And that's weird. Like the powder appears actually white in those creases. And maybe it's a case of just needing to use a setting mist after the fact, which I'm not used to doing with Westman Atelier because I've never used a setting powder from Westman Atelier before, but it is quite pretty and quite blurring but I am just like disconcerted by like how visible it is. I don't know. I don't know. I think that like, I can't help but see the fact that like, it's from Westman Atelier and I paid $75 for it. You know, my expectations are going to be for perfection. And I wanted, I wanted a little bit more magic, but it's not bad. <laughs> okay, this is our beauty butter powder bronzer in Coup de Soleil. I was thinking about how with Clean Beauty, I've gotten so accustomed to everything being smaller than I expected it to be. And like, this is no exception. I was just like expecting this very abundant bronzer pan. And I was like, yeah, well, you know, of course it's small, but there is one brand sidebar here. There is one brand that is just absolutely bucking those expectations. And that is RMS, man. It's like they're trying to undo all of the like preciousness that RMS has represented for so long because you used to get these teeny tiny little compacts of kid makeup where it was like you had trouble like fat fingering a little bit out and like putting it on your face. And it was because apparently all their stuff was like uncooked and unpreserved and so it would expire really fast and so you needed to buy teeny tiny amounts of it. But at the same time, like why was it costing us a fortune to do that, you know? So now they're like, I mean, these things are like, that's full size makeup fam. And not only that, this is refillable and it does this number. Look how cool that is. Look at like this. Is, look at that. All right, we're not talking about that in this video, but like I'm just impressed, okay? I like, I like the vibe. I like what RMS is doing right now. It feels much more luxurious. Even if it were the same amount of product, it feels more luxurious to have a larger pan that's just not so darn like make you feel like an idiot while you're putting it on. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Okay, so here we go. Now, the thing that I noticed about this formula that I like a lot is like when you first put this on, you're like, okay, um, it's a little, it can be a little stampy because I'm used to, if I'm working with powder on top of cream like this, that's a colored powder and I haven't like powdered my entire face, I'm not super comfortable buffing usually. And that was my big reservation about buying this initially was I was, I remember I used to have like a huge block in my brain about using powder right on top of cream, especially with a bronzer or like a blush or something. And I would watch like Raw Beauty Christy, like she will literally just go in and like buff bronzer on top of a completely like unset complexion look. And somehow it totally works for her and she's not like hard panning all her stuff. And I don't understand how, but I also don't understand how she does most of her makeup. Like it always looks freaking incredible. And I'm like, well, that doesn't look like that. Can't account for skills and experience. <laughs> but yeah, the thing that I found about this that is just kind of hard for me to really explain is that like, watch, I can like stamp this in a spot. Well, I tried and it'll still blend and I don't know how she did it. It's like it's floating on top of my skin. Like, I don't understand how this like, can you know, you see there's like a little line right there and it like stamps and it, I mean, it'll move forever in like the best way possible. And it never picks the rest of my makeup up. It looks a little bit red on camera and it might be, it might be a little bit red and it is quite pigmented, which is great. You know, this might not be the most ideal brush for it, but like, that's also kind of the beauty of it. It's like, look, I can take a brush and just kind of keep buffing it and it keeps blending. Isn't that cool? What in the heck? And it's powder. It's powder. I know I, I keep having to like emphasize it to myself because it doesn't feel like it doesn't behave like a powder. Like if I did that with like the Thrive bronzer because it's like waterproof, man, that thing just goes and it's on there. Like good luck. But this is so forgiving. It's easy 
and the ease of it makes it fun. I'm very impressed with this bronzer, even if it's a little tiny tad red. Just a little tiny tad red, you know? So, ooh, yay 4K. Can you see that? Can you see how underneath my eyes, the powder just, it's so micro finely milled that it actually, the powder itself collects in the creases under my eyes. And it's not actually as it wears in, it's literally momentarily after I've put it on. So yeah, I don't really know how I feel about that. I don't know how I feel about that. I wish that it was my skin color. If it was my skin color, it'd be fine, but it's white. And if it were pink, it'd be pink, you know? <laughs> I still kind of think that like my fears, now that I've seen this, I think that my fears about bubble pink being um pink would be kind of warranted, you know? All right, the last thing I'm gonna put on here before I just kind of like zoom through my eye look is this. This is the Bonnie Brow Defining Pencil or Bonne? Bon? Bon Brow uh, Defining Pencil. I got this in the shade Clay. I don't know if I meant to do that. It just looked like a medium brown to me. Oddly, like it looks really fantastic there. It even looks like it's a little bit green, right? It's a really, really good color, but as it goes on, it's warm and I don't know why. <laughs> Can't make sense of it. It is a kind of a dash, well, not kind of, it's a dash shape. And then it has your spoolie that unscrews out of the component on the back right here. What I found actually that I like about this because it is so stiff is that like you can use this point obviously to draw individual brow hairs in but that flat side actually lends itself better than any other like a dash shaped pencil that I've found to just kind of gliding on top of the hairs as another way of putting it on that just distributes color onto the actual brow hairs instead of onto your skin so I'll demo here I always want to fill this spot in because I have like brows here and not brows there Okay. Do you see how it's kind of warm compared to my, maybe it's turning kind of warm on my skin, but like, it doesn't, I wouldn't have thought it would have done that. I, it doesn't bother me. It's just like, it doesn't look like what it looks like when I swatch it. Maybe it's like too green. It's, it's very hard to like distinguish the color of it because it's like sitting against my, my actual brow hairs. Let's get it on both eyebrows and maybe it won't be so disconcerting to look at. Okay, now taking, you know, the long side, right, of the dash shape, and I'm just kind of using that, pushing against my eyebrows, and it's not gonna draw right on the skin. It's just gonna draw on the hairs and get some color on the actual hairs. So it sort of serves the purpose of a colored gel in that sense. It is really satisfying. There's like a little bit of like a click when you roll it back down. It doesn't have like a click up. It just rolls up really smoothly and then it rolls back down and goes, it doesn't make a sound, but it just kind of gently locks back into place and it doesn't, you know, jiggle after that. And my money don't jiggle, jiggle, it folds. Then I'm going to take the spoolie hair and just work it in a little. And I will probably still just go in with something clear on top, probably the Ismea or something, because I still want some definition, but it's very different. I do think it's different for a reason. I'm not sure that I am the ideal customer for it, but I see where she's coming from. It's mainly just that color is bizarre. It's weird, isn't it? It's kind of like a complexion product in the way that if you have a complexion product that's like a perfect match, you actually wear less of it. 
because it blends right into your skin, but if it doesn't match, you have to be really, really tedious about the actual coverage because otherwise you'll notice the missing patches. And that's how I had to go with the brows. Like that's why I gotta look like Sam Waterston right now. So for my eyes, because I don't have the eye pods, I am still going to go with something really like straightforward and, and simple that kind of mimics that. I'm just gonna go with my little Tom Ford pot here and we'll zoom through. My brows look a little bit better, but they're still green. <laughs> they're still green, which actually makes them more like my hair color. It's just odd. It's just not what I was expecting. Okay, so the final touch here, and I really like, I'm surprising exactly no one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm, and this is not a liquid lip balm. I'm looking for my lip liner. Red, red wine. This is Talented from Rare Beauty. But yeah, the Squeaky Clean Liquid Lip Balm is just great. It's not a typical liquid lip balm the way that it has that kind of like slippy feeling. It's just like a really beautiful, lightweight, lovely smelling, nourishing lip balm. And <laughs> the colors, the colors, Duke. This is Nana and it's just the most perfect cool beige. It's just like an effortless touch. Now, one thing that I do feel like is lost here was my blush because I put the bronzer right on top. So you can experiment with the order, obviously, of light cream and powder, but we're going to go in with just a little bit more. What did I do here? What did I do here? Look at me. Look at me. Look at the thing I did. Boop. Boop. What color? I actually think I'm going to go in with more Mimi just because... It's kind of the color that my lips turned after I put that cool toned beige on there. So Mimi's definitely a standalone. Like you don't feel like it has to be like, you know, complexion shade kind of thing. And then it can't be a focal point. Like it's absolutely main character energy if you want it to be. It might also be that the bronzer is a little bit red and it's making the brow product look green -er even by contrast because red and green are opposites. So also, you know, it's a little bit, like I said, disconcerting always. My face always looks a little bit messier when I don't put, you know, a full coverage foundation or even a foundation of any kind on. And that's just because like, you know, my freckles, my freckles show through. And like I said, kind of final touch here, I'm gonna go in and like touch up with a little bit more of the Vital Skin, Vital Skin? Vital Skin foundation stick. I'm using a concealer brush this time because it tends to lose its opacity as you're sort of working on top of it and being skincare based, your skin's gonna kind of absorb just a little bit of it. It's also a really good way to just kind of tweak the proportions of everything at the end because my blush tends to get a little too close to my nose, like into this area right here. And it's always kind of this little seesaw between 
too bright underneath my eyes and not bright enough underneath my eyes, but I think that we managed to do it. Updated final thoughts on these items, kind of uh, makeup playtime style. So I really do think that Westman Atelier shines in their cream products the most, like the original conception of the brand, which is, you know, these sticks basically. And that is why I own so darn many of them. And ah, this isn't even all of them. And I have had, like I said, the lit up highlighter stick and it didn't please me. No me gusta. It just was not the thing for me. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, but there's something really beautiful, blurring and hybrid actually about these cream stick formulas, because this is Mimi again, as you blend this out, it does go to a very non-dewy powder finish that looks like skin. And I think that that's really the advantage of a Westman Atelier formula. Unless you have an allergy to coconut oil, because I'm pretty sure that this has a lot of coconut oil in it. Other than that, it's very, very kind from a skincare standpoint to like sensitive skin or dry skin, especially. It's gonna kind of like maintain your hydration over the day and just nourish your skin and it doesn't break me out. It's not comedogenic or anything. But also the way that it looks literally like skin. It just looks enhanced. And yes, I went in with every step of my routine today and just added, you know, a little touch here, a little touch there to like really, you know, give the experience. But any of these products, any of the ones that I use today could be used alone. With the exception of really that brow. I wouldn't use it by itself because the color is just so like not great on me. But the blush or the contour or just the vital skin foundation stick or whatever can be used alone without any of the other ones and it just kind of looks like it grew there which is i think the the real selling point of westman atelier as a brand not to say that like other things aren't like that but they really really like smash it out of the park in that sense as far as like the new stuff that i got I dig the bronzer a lot, especially just bearing in mind that it's a little bit red. That kind of makes me think, okay, I can kind of carry that into fall and winter a little bit and use it almost like a br bronzer blush, a, a bronzer, if you will. And also it's the most unique formula of a powder bronzer I've used in a long time in its strange agreeability with all textures. You guys saw it, you can stamp it and then you can just keep working it. I have no idea how she did that, but it's like this strange suspended powder that doesn't disrupt other things under it. And it doesn't get angry and start like gripping everywhere. I don't know how she did it. It doesn't make any sense. And honestly, if that were the first powder that you ever used, just, you know, hypothetically, you would be angry at all other powders after that, powder bronzers, because you'd be like, why are all these so finicky? I've never had a problem before. It is so wild. That is a really, really cool formula. That bronzer is, is fantastic. I like it a lot. But the other new stuff that I got, starting with this powder, these are really difficult compacts to open, I will say that. Like the actual notch to open them is really small. There we go. I'm always scared I'm gonna jab my fingernail in there. It's already starting to hard pan on me. Ugh, don't do that. It's white. I think that's the main issue that I have is just the same issue that I experienced right when I put it on is I'm like, I'm waiting for it to not be so darn white and it's just so darned white. The way that like it kind of accentuates any texture or any imperfection in my skin with white. <laughs> It's literally highlighting the imperfections. It's just, I don't know, I don't know if it's for me, you know? It might be something that like the deeper shades match people's skin tones and don't stand in stark contrast like that. But like my skin is light, but it isn't white. It's also not pink. So I'm not really sure what the solution would be for me in this case. Maybe there is like a light enough actual complexion match shade in the range. I'm not sure, but... Mm -mm. It just, it just isn't, it just isn't it for me. I just, I don't know, for, especially for $75, like I would much rather have my Kosos powder. And as beautiful as the presentation is on this brow pencil, I had high hopes for it. And I'm not gonna say I'll never use it again. It's just kind of an incongruous color to my skin, which is strange because it makes it, makes my brows match my hair perfectly. 
Maybe I should get used to it. I like the delivery system a lot more than I expected to because of the nature of like the stiffness of the pencil. It actually works really well as both a, you know, brow imitating kind of line drawing pencil, but also it kind of works really nicely to lay some color down on top of your actual brow hairs. And then all I do is use the clear gel on top to give it some definition, which I would do anyway. So I like it. And I like it because it's different, but also I'm having a hard time knowing where the limits are, the outer limits of its use case, because it's different, you know? So I'm not, I'm definitely not angry about it. It's just, you guys let me know. Like, is the color strange or is it like more actually at home on my skin than a lot of the other brow colors that I use? I cannot decide, I cannot decide. <laughs> and you'll never catch me saying a sour word about these they are some of my favorite lip balm lip gloss formulas it's glass and metal and it just there's something really really luxurious about the feeling of it i love using it i love the smell of it i love the colors it's just i like it a lot and i understand that like that's not not everybody's uh affinity as it were to like have an overpriced lip balm in their collection like i get that but this happens to be my particular affinity so take that with the largest grain of salt that that you want but yeah man i actually really really dig this face of makeup I managed to make that Tom Ford pot work. I'm really trying to get my head around it. I want to get my money's worth out of it, especially because the color is so pretty, but the cream can be so finicky. But today I just kind of like muscled through it and I like what I came out with. This color brown is something I love wearing because it's just very, very like sexy on my eyes. Like there's just something about that kind of like rich brown on my complexion that makes me look like I have like bedroom eyes or something and I love that. But it's also not the most uncommon color in the world. Like it's something that's in like this Aether Quad. It's also in the Kaja, what, the Orange Blossom Trio. Like it's a shade that exists other places in ways that are easier to apply, but it's also very pretty in that, what is it called? Naked Bronze, I think is what that one's called. Yeah, Naked Bronze Cream and Powder Eye Color, which has nothing to do with Westman Atelier. I just wanted to do something that kind of mimicked the vibe a little bit of the iPods, even though the iPods were not my favorite thing that they've ever done, so yeah. That's it today, guys. That's my full face of Westman Atelier featuring some new products. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I'm gonna have a Lunia try on review for you guys on Monday, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.